other on a benefit. Thank you. Goodness, goodness. Um, who hasn't had a go? Oh, the Right Honourable David Carter. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, and uh, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to say a few words. I've been no listening problem. to the debate, and I want to thank the Minister, the Honourable Carmel Cipollone, for finally taking a call and answering oh. a question, because the purpose of the Committee of the Whole is for us to ask questions and tease out the validity of and the effects of this legislation. And there have been a large number of questions asked, and I want to move to two specific uh, range of questions, and I certainly hope the Honourable Carmel Cipollone will take the opportunity of answering those questions to my satisfaction. The first thing I want to do is refer the Minister to the uh, regulatory impact statement and page 12. And this is the point that was raised earlier by the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, which hasn't been answered by the Minister and the Chair, and I hope she will. But this impact statement says the introduction of Best Start and its abatement at 21 per cent will increase disincentives to work for groups of families between $80,000 and $95,000. So I want the Minister to tell me, in the research that was done, how many families sit in that bracket, because I would have thought most low to middle income families, two parents working hard, will probably sit in the bracket of a gross household income coming into that house of eighty dollars to $95,000. And if that's so, what this document is saying is those people will be there will be a distinct disincentive for those people to work harder. How's that going to lift the productivity of this economy? I don't think it's going to. So I note now we've got a relief minister in the chair. So my question to the Honourable Enlees Galloway is for him to explain to us how many families sit in the bracket noted in the regulatory impact statement as people who will be worse off by the introduction of the best start payment. And not only do I want to know how many families are worse off, I want to understand the rationale from this government, from this Labor, Greens, Mr 7 per cent New Zealand first government, oh. I want to understand I want to understand the rationale for why. Yes. Anyway, we're not into percent. The only, the only thing I want to know is the percentage of, of taxpayers who sit in this bracket and will be worse off. The encouragement will be them, for them, as the Honourable Dr Nick Smith said, when they're offered a pay rise for uh, additional responsibilities, when they're asked to do further work their abatement rate will exceed 100 per cent. Will exceed 100 per cent. That's an incredible position for any government to put people into. The second point I want to tease out is um, page 35 of the bill, section 47, income tax 2008, uh, 2007 amended. I take it that that is the clause that takes away the tax package that was passed in May this year by the previous national-led government. It's confirmation of that. And then I want the minister to tell me what discussions occurred between the coalition partners as they brought this legislation before parliament, because I take the opportunity of reminding the committee that only seven months ago, New Zealand First and the Greens voted for that clause they're now apparently going to vote to take out. There doesn't seem any logic to me that two rather small parties in this parliament, very small, very small and getting smaller, might I add, Scott Simpson, getting a lot, lot smaller, um, why those two parties were supportive of a package to help 1.2 million New Zealanders and yet now come forward today to support a package that I calculate helps perhaps, if I believe government figures, 750,000 New Zealanders. But as I've identified in my earlier uh, part of this contribution, significantly disincentivise 
probably the majority of low to middle income two, uh, uh, two partners within a relationship working hard to better themselves for their own children. I'd be grateful if the minister would answer the questions. Then I'll call the Honourable Louise Upston. Madam Chair, um, I wanted to, just continuing uh, my questions of the Minister, and um, go back to the comments that were made by Erica um, Sanford in particular, because uh, I think the Minister and the